Jay and Linda Lewis have been a part of our spiritual family in Mid-Cities for over 22 years. They have served in a lot of different areas. They've led various discipleship groups, and now they serve on the prayer team. Uh, they have seven incredible kids, Elaine, Lincoln, Kingston, uh, Lomi, Eva, uh, Henry, and Sophia. They are foodies. You might not know this, but they like the finer things in life, something you should know about them. And I don't want to take the credit, but I will, because early on when we were neighbors years ago, I introduced them to the Dairy Queen Blizzard. And I feel like that put them on a path for future success when it comes to food. Listen, they have a story that they want to share with you, and they're from the Pew. Welcome, Jay and Lana Lewis. All right, all right. Yay. Hey, everybody. We're the Lewises here. By the way, this Dairy Queen thing, let me set something straight. You did introduce me to Dairy Queen. Daniel and I, there's a book at Dairy Queen with all the pictures of their best patrons. This is true, and we're in that book. It is true. That is such a concerning thing. <laughs> it's concerning that we're in there. We're excited to be here. We have, some, we have some stories to share with you guys. We've grown up in this church. We've been in this church for 20 plus years. We met here in the college and career ministry. We uh, dated here. We got engaged here. We got married here, literally. Pastor Kevin and Renee married us. We served under, under Daniel and Kayla in the youth ministry for a stint. We've done life groups. All of our life has happened here, and so I'm looking out here and I see people that know a bunch of our funk. It's gonna, we've had highs, we've had high highs and high lows. If you know Lynn and I, we, we kind of, we, we go for it. It's either all in or it's a, it's a hot mess. So we're gonna, here's what we entitled our message. Get ready to walk off your map, okay? That's the title of our message. I want everybody to say, I'm ready to walk off my map. I've always wanted to do that. Thank you for being obedient. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna regret saying you wanna walk off your map, maybe. Maybe after we share this. Okay, so here's our scripture. Let's get right into our scripture because this is perfect for what we went through in the year 2011. We're gonna tell you all about this specific year where God took us off of our map. Here it is, okay. Uh, Genesis 12:1. the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Uh, the reason why we picked that scripture is because uh, he literally just told Abram and Sarah, get up and go, and I'll show you where you're going. And that's what it felt like in 2011. So let's give them a rundown how our lives changed from kind of a normal little tidy life to an absolute not tidy life. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Hi, I'm Lana. Um, so 2011 was a very big year in our lives. At that point, we'd been married for seven years. We had two boys, Lincoln and Kingston, and we were really desiring more of God. And it was, I just remember that time where Jay and I would pray and we'd talk about what we were discussing in life, like we want more of God. We feel like God wants more of us. And we did a few things during this time, mostly like that was our prayer and our intention, but um, that just radically changed our life. God just started, things started coming to us. And so the main thing that happened was we got involved and we started supporting a missionary in Ethiopia. And at that time, we started having, we didn't, I didn't know, I had a dream that I was walking down a road, a dirt road, and I was holding a little girl's hand, and she had dark skin. And I woke up, and when I woke up, I knew her name was Cora. And I know that sounds bizarre. I didn't know anything about Cora. But I find out later that the town the missionary was doing ministry in was, the town was called Cora. And Jay and I started getting involved in Cora, knowing about what was going on. At the same time, there was a move of God going on in the church. And a lot of our friends were fostering and adopting. And Jay and I had never had thoughts of ever doing that. Two boys was plenty yeah. for me. And, um, but because of what God was doing in our hearts, we come across a picture of these girls. They were on the waiting children list to be adopted. They were in Ethiopia. And we had an instant connection to their picture. And we were at dinner. And I just remember... The, our little friend saying, hey, we're adopting. This, these are some girls that came up for adoption today. And Jay's like, we're gonna adopt them. And I looked Very at Very zealous, so confident, 100% <laughs> sure. We got this, no, this we'll is, adopt them all. This is really what happened. And I looked over at him and I was like, yeah, we're going to do Done. that. Done. We're doing that. And yeah. uh, because we were involved in Ethiopia at the time, we got, I called my friend that was a missionary and she got us in touch with the people that were, was working with that agency with the girls. And we signed on the next day to adopt. Like we called, 
we got all the paperwork done with our oil and gas people, like that we shut down for a couple days and yeah. we did paperwork. After we sign on, one month later, I find out that I'm pregnant. <laughs> okay. okay, I know what I thought. Can yeah. we get out of this adoption? Yeah. <laughs> without, not, without looking bad. No, That's really, we flesh. didn't have that thought, yeah. Heck but yeah. we didn't. So, so we're pregnant. It's too much already. We're pregnant. We got two boys. We're about to get two Ethiopian beautiful girls. And then at the same time, we, I was leading a small group. Um, we feel connected to this one girl. She had 16. another dream. Tell this real quick. Tell the second dream because we're like basing lots off dreams in our lives at this point. If it's a dream, it's happening the next day. Okay, well, I don't normally have dreams. I mean, we're not, nor I mean, I know we're zealous, but this isn't a regular thing. The dream, I remembered it and I felt like it was God, you know. So I have this dream. I'm sitting on the ground in a small group setting with like five girls that are in high school. And so I feel like God's calling me to go. So I call Ben at the time, he was a youth pastor. I say, hey, I wanna serve in youth ministry. So I'm just doing small groups and I meet this girl. I feel super connected to her. Jay, she comes to dinner a lot. She babysits, we love her. And she moves in at the same time because she had a hard, hard time at home. It was really like a troubled situation, but it was just part-time. We didn't plan on doing anything with that, but we loved her. She moves in, the girls are coming. I'm pregnant. And then something happens in business. Okay, then, so there's already layers of pressure. We're already concerned. Our marriage is shaky. I mean, oh, yeah. Daniel yeah. and Kayla, we would always play spades with them, and they would, we'd tell them how much we fought. Like, we'd talk about a normal day, like, yeah, we did this, and we got in this fight, and all these things, and I just remember their faces being like, oh, man. <laughs> like, God, well, you better us, show up. To us, it was normal to fight, but we would end spades tournaments with me being furious and stomping out, and Jay's like, oh, God. You know, when it's coming so, out in spades, you know that's yeah, like there's deeper yeah. root issues. Yeah. <laughs> business. Right. Okay, so that same year, 2011, same year, we had the two kids. Now we have four, right? We have the pregnancy. We have the two Ethiopian wonderfuls. We have Elaine, wonderful. Uh, and then God calls us out of our business. There's a whole story there, but the bottom line is God gave us a word. We, we did all this on words that we're supposed to leave our business, and we didn't know what we were going to do. It was just a word right. like, hey, leave. And so that was another yes layered on top of all that. And that's when things... Okay, so we had said our yeses. Those are basically the yeses, right? And we failed. Okay, yeah, so the business failed. But thanks for, she loves just, mm, fail. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. She doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. Stop. Everybody said, I'm ready. No, let's not do it again. Okay, uh, so we said all these yeses, and then here comes the resistance. Because here's the thing. When you start saying yes to God, and you like start walking off your map, all hell breaks loose against you. But don't be afraid because God's gonna use it to deliver you. You're gonna learn how to fight and all these things. But this, a lot of negative things started happening. Number one, we, we trusted God. We, we launched this business and it immediately failed. I mean, like within six months, we tried like three projects. It's oil and gas. They all didn't work. We run out of money. We have all these kids. Our angst level is through the roof. It's not funny anymore. No more laughing. <laughs> this was sad. We were in terrible torment and pain. And then we were having all the thoughts like, God, where are you? I thought you called we're us. Crazy. To, we're crazy. Yeah. We just do stuff. And some of that was true. But we, we started questioning whether we were hearing from God in the first place, which we were hearing from God. Yes. Come to find out. Because, you know, this was 11 years ago. So now we can tell you. But, okay, so that was going on. Yeah, so we need to tell them what we learned. Let's tell them some things we learned. All right. So the first thing is, with the girls, when the girls came in, not only are you going through the adoption and, you know, two Ethiopians probably being scared of you. They've never been around anyone with light skin. That's one thing. I was pregnant and hormonal, and then I had Sophia. And then the disappointment of, of finding out that she had Down syndrome, me having to process that. Yes. But we also went through a ton of spiritual warfare. Yes. And what we did is this body of Christ saved us. Yep. Jesus saved us through these people. And so we reached out to our friends and we reached out to my parents and the elders and we learned how to fight spiritually. We learned how to, we, I mean, we, we were raised in church and I, I knew truth, but I don't really feel like I knew like my identity in Christ and my authority over the enemy. And so through this, we learn like how to fight and we get involved in a ministry here called Free Indeed. And then through, after we fought and like the spiritual warfare was leaving, we got whole. Yes. <laughs> like God started freeing us individually. Like I remember a week, a week after Free Indeed was over, Jay and I got in a fight and we would fight regularly before, remember? 
And oh, I remember. Yeah. And I was a straight weenie. Like she's like I'm like the softer, nice guy. So she would fight and be like have a lash out, and I would paralyze and lay on the floor and like couldn't take it. I couldn't take anything. Very thin skinned. Not anymore though. No. Yeah. So I just remember. Why is this? Is this really funny? Yeah. We are killing it. We're killing it. Okay. So I knew it. a week after Free Indeed, this is a really good moment because I just remember we got in a fight and I just remember my mind being quiet. Yeah. I was at peace in my mind. And I remember when we fight before, I was like everywhere in my mind, like what do I need to do to make sure he knows he's wrong? And it was just like quiet and I didn't know what to do with it. And what's powerful about that is since my mind's quiet, I learned how to like work with this guy. Yeah. And we, are, we have a lot of people at this point and we got a lot of things going on and that's helpful. So I wasn't just fighting Jay, I was fighting the enemy and I was walking through and I had the people around me doing it. We had people praying and we, we had this body. And I'm not kidding, you have to get involved. You gotta get involved with the body of Christ because it saved us through a really hard time. Yeah, had we not had the body, that song we just sang, I will build my life upon your love, it is a firm foundation. I love those words because we had the foundation and when the storm came and when all that stuff came, it's like we had all the resources we need to get the victory and God through the body of Christ. And that ties into the business too because at the same time, you know, we're dealing with the spiritual warfare. We, we had lost our business. Well, we didn't completely lose the business, but we lost that first round and the body of Christ surrounded us. I'm telling you, I, wish you, I, I just wish you could have been there because we had gifts come in. We had people like dropping money in our coat pockets. We had all kinds of support. And that was a really critical time for me because we already always prided ourselves in generosity. Like we love to give and to do things like that. And that was a time where we had nothing to give and we had to receive. And it was a time of humility. It's, it's hard to receive, but that little thing that God taught us was, was very powerful to us that we got to see God pouring out to us through the body and we got to receive. And it does something in you. It shifts something in you. That was a powerful moment for us. Yeah, it was like, you know, for a while there in our, in our marriage, we had, given, we had given a lot and we had partnered with God, but it was also, we didn't realize these things were in our heart where I, I didn't know that we could fail. I didn't know that you could go through something like that and you could even have the feeling of like, God, where are you? Yeah. Like, are you not gonna show up? And I had that feeling for a while. And what happened is I, I got to slough off all the feelings of like, God owed me yep. or anything like that. It was like he was there and he was real and it was a really hard time and it was dark and he, end up, he ended up showing up as he did a work inside of our heart. Like a lot of weird things in our heart were falling off. So it was like as we were walking this out and what God had called us to, he yes. was doing a character building. That's it right. was who knew God knew how to do things like that. God will take you into a furnace because he's getting all the dross out, right? He's, you're gonna come out as gold. He had to take us through the furnace. It actually saved our marriage. It galvanized our marriage. We learned to fight with each other and not against each other. And like we would wake up in the middle of the night. I remember one time I woke up at like three in the morning, stressed, you know, you're out of money, having like a panic attack, it's terrible. And I'm walking through the house and I see Lana, she's walking through the house. And we just like look at each other like, hey, war buddy. <laughs> we became these war partners. It's and that, that God really used that to save our marriage. God ended up redeeming the business. After he got all those little dross things out and he did his thing, he restored the business. We had some success after that. We've had the business for over 10 years now. God taught us something amazing about Sophia. I want you to end on this and then we'll have a little moment. But tell about the Sophia thing because when we got the diagnosis of Down syndrome, we went through all kinds of stages like denial and then, oh, we're gonna pray for her healing and all these things and God taught us some things through that. For sure. Um, so I had never been around anyone with special needs, so I didn't know what that looked like. So when we got the diagnosis, I just went straight into no way. Yeah. There's no way that that's, that's the truth, you know? And so we went through, he's, it's true, we went through, there's no way that's true. And then we went to God, please touch her, please heal her. Yeah. Because in your mind, you know, when you have a child, you have this opinion of what you want them to look like and what you want them to be and the life you want them to live. And I had to hand it over and be like, okay. I mean, we have to do that anyway with all of our children, but with Sophia, it was a little different. Yep. And I had never pleaded with God so much my entire life. I remember breastfeeding at night in the morning and just telling God what I would do for him if he would change things, you know. And, oh, this part makes me emotional. If I would have known, 
what it looked like to have a Sophia. I, I always tell the Lord, I wish I would have known what, what it looked like because I would just enjoy those moments yeah. and be like, thank you so much because she's my very favorite part and I'm not joking. She's all the kids' favorites, and they're not here this, this service, so I can say she's my favorite, you know? I'll say it to the kids. I'll say it right <laughs> to their faces. She gets more food. She gets more clothing. <laughs> she probably does. She does, yeah. Okay, so anyway, the, the point of that, I guess if I need to sum that up, is we don't always know, you know, what's the best, and he does. And God so, knows, yeah. His ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. Think about all those losses and all those things. They sound terrible, and it was, and we cried a lot, and our friends held our arms up during those times. But God's ways were so much higher. Our, our, th that was our inheritance. We had these seven kids from around the world, all different personalities. We had special needs. We had a thriving family business. We have a work that we do in Cora now from Lana's Dream. Like, God saw all this inheritance. We had this promised land, and God was going to walk us through it. It's so crazy that... It, it took letting go of our simple, tidy plan. That was one of the keys. And trust me, we had a tidy plan. So here's how we want to wrap this sucker up. Um, I'm going to pray. And uh, I want everybody to visualize your little map of your life because we all have one. Um, we plan out our lives. You know, sometimes we think, I need to curate my life so I have the best survival down to my demise, right? And I'm God's pet and this is God's terrarium and I got to have my clean little tidy life. Wow, God is so different. Look at anybody in the Bible. Oh my gosh, he's calling everybody off these maps. Everybody in the Bible has a crazy story. I mean, everything in there, you can name anyone. And God had this much bigger thing. He's into battles. He's into mountains moving. He's into coming up to Red Seas. He's, into, he's like a, a very dramatic, adventurous type of God. And so he has these big plans for our lives. But in the end is glory. In the end is joy. In the end is all these breakthroughs and, and a bag of miracles where you can say, I have miracles in my life, like I see in the Bible. Without, when you're on your map, a lot of times that doesn't happen that way. So will you please bow your head and close your eyes with me and just kind of visualize your plan and your map of your life. And we just wanna encourage you to open up your heart and say, God, I want your map. God, you can have the map. God, do have your way. Let your will be done in my life. God, I thank you for this church. I see my friends out here. I see my family out here. Thank you that you planted us here 20 years ago. Thank you that our life has happened in this desert, in this church. Thank you for Mid-Cities, God. Thank you that you had a bigger map for us. Thank you, Lord, that you sustained us when we were about to give up. And God, I just pray over everybody in this room that they would give you their map, God, and that they would start walking in the map that you have designed for them and they would start facing their giants and start facing mountains with you in partnership, God, and that you would move mountains and do these amazing things like you've done in our lives. And God, I just pray for anyone in here who's already said yes to God and they're in the battle and all hell has broken loose and they can't hold on and they needed a word and a touch today, so you brought them here. God, I just pray right now that you would encourage them and strengthen them. You sustain the righteous. Many adversities come to the righteous, but you deliver them from them all. You are a delivery God. You're gonna, you're gonna bring victory in the darkest hour and it's always darkest before the dawn and the breakthrough. So God, I pray for a turnaround in circumstances. I pray that businesses would jump Jump up and start being profitable. I pray that relationships will start coming back together. I pray for freedom against addiction. Father, all these things, I pray that mountains would move for our people. We are a people that walk off our map with you. We are a people in partnership with you. That's the DNA of this church, Father. That's who we are. So I pray strength over this body this morning that everybody would go forward in victory with you. In the name of Jesus, amen.